Over the years, I've been asked a number of times whether Roundup, or more accurately, the active ingredient glyphosate used in Roundup, will kill grass permanently. And in theory, the answer is a resounding yes. Glyphosate is a non-selective herbicide. It's going to kill most all vegetation that it touches. However, you need to have enough of the herbicide coming into contact with the target grass to fully kill it. That's why the application rate is what it is on the instructions of the product label that you're using. For most yard owners, the main target vegetation for glyphosate is turf grasses and grassy weeds, which are going to fall under the monocot category. Broadleaf weeds are dicots, and then the woody stemmed weeds are otherwise known as eudicots. Now, if you under apply glyphosate to a lawn, then you may get some permanent death in your grass, but much of your lawn will probably only be stunted or severely damaged, especially so if your existing lawn is quite mature and healthy. Now, over the course of this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the clips of my own progress, trying to permanently kill off a section of my let's call it my front lawn next to the driveway. Spoiler alert, it's literally going to take me three or four applications to achieve a permanent kill. Today, I'm applying for the third time. I've already done it twice. Because glyphosate enters a plant through its leaf tissues and translocates through the plant to the root system, it takes time for the roots to die, meaning the leaf above the ground is going to continue to look alive and healthy for at least a week and a half or so. At that point, it's going to slowly start fading over the next seven to 10 days. But because glyphosate isn't soil mobile, microbes in the soil will break the chemical down pretty quickly. A large factor in the effectiveness has to do with how much leaf material of the grass is currently sitting above the ground. This is in relation to the root mass that it has underground. The plant can't die without it killing the root. If you have very short cut grass and very dense root system, then a full dose of glyphosate applied to the lawn may not deliver enough product to the roots to fully kill it in one application. For this reason, it's worth watering and fertilizing the lawn a couple weeks prior to the application of the herbicide and then letting it get a touch overgrown. That way you can ensure that there is plenty of healthy leaf tissue above the ground, which is able to accept the poison and then usher it down to the roots. Along the same vein, grasses that are dormant are going to be having living root material below the soil. And then the leaves above the soil are brown. Dormant grass leaves won't uptake enough herbicide to translocate a lethal dose to the root system of the lawn or the weed. So later, when dormancy breaks, the plant or plants will start growing again. Yard owners should also note that although most grass types will die easily enough when a proper application of glyphosate is applied, some grasses and weeds have more substantial roots than others do. Uticots are woody stemmed plants. They come in the form of trees, shrubs, vines, ivies. These types of plants will also be killed by glyphosate, but it's much harder to do so because the plant is, uh, let's call it just tougher. Baby trees, for instance, can update glyphosate through their thin skinned baby bark. And in most cases, they won't die but they'll exhibit signs of injury for multiple seasons. With repeated applications, they will die. Ivy can be killed with a single round of 41% glyphosate mixed at full label rate, but only with a 95% effectiveness, meaning multiple applications would have to be applied to roughly one out of every 20 ivy plants to kill them off permanently. Getting back to grass, Although Kakuya grass is a monocot, the roots, stems, stolons, and rhizomes are extremely tough, almost like a woody weed. And considering a lawn doesn't have 20 plants growing in it, they probably have tens of thousands of individual plants growing. Even at a 99.9% .9 effective rate, that means you'd still have 10 plants remaining for every 10,000 grass plants in your lawn. And that's only if the conditions for herbicidal application were perfect. Another way that glyphosate applications are rarely, if ever, perfect is when your lawn is particularly dense. 
Imagine for a moment that you're standing under a tree during a rainstorm. Some of the rain is going to fall through the canopy of the tree and make your head wet. But you're not going to be nearly as wet as you would have been had the tree not been there in the first place. Some of the grass plants are alive and growing near the bottom of your lawn's canopy. When you spray glyphosate on a thick lawn, the upper layer of the canopy will be sufficiently coated by the herbicide, but the lower profile will only be partially coated or not touched at all. It is very common for multiple rounds of herbicide to be needed, especially in dense lawns, for this very reason. And when all other factors come into play simultaneously, dormancy, thick turf, woody weeds, dense root mass, shortcut grass, human error, less potent mix rates, some lawn owners find that even two rounds of glyphosate or Roundup application still doesn't kill off a lawn permanently. That's me right now. In my case, last year in the fall, I applied two rounds of glyphosate to kill my mostly Kikuyu Bermuda grass lawn space, which is next to my driveway, while adding the specialty herbicide Turflon Ester Ultra, which is a triclopyr based herbicide. I added that into the mix because it's known to improve the glyphosate effectiveness on these two grass types. And still, in the month of February this year, I have obvious signs of Kakuya grass regrowth. Now, so far the Bermuda seems to be gone. However, it may still start coming back as soil temperatures continue to climb going into spring. For me, I'm going to apply a third round of glyphosate to my lawn today and then cover the area up with greenhouse plastic to make sure that the soil warms up enough over the next couple weeks to ensure as much grass as possible exits dormancy before March ever comes. Now keep in mind, I live in Southern California and soil temperatures here on the 7th of February are nearly 60 degrees, plenty warm enough for warm season grass growth. If it looks like I still have some Kikuyu grass or Bermuda growing by early March, then I'm gonna have to apply a fourth round to ensure a permanent lawn kill. Four sounds crazy, but it's not. Takeaway here is that permanently killing off a full lawn or a patch of grass with Roundup or some other product that uses glyphosate is not as easy as most people lead you to believe. One single application before reseeding an area is most likely going to result in regrowth of something that you thought you got rid of. Using glyphosate to achieve permanent removal of grass should be considered a long process. You should be patient with it and expect it to be harder than your friend told you that it was going to be back when he did it ages ago. Now make sure to see this video right up here. It's on how to kill a lawn with glyphosate. It should give you more tips on how to do it effectively or more effectively. And if you'd like to learn more about the common Kikuyu grass that I'm currently fighting, then go down into the description below. I've got a few Kikuyu grass videos linked down there. Thank you very much for watching.